Welcome in London in Belgium for the opening round of the Belgian Rally Championship 2014. This is the Rally van Haspengau and we're driving with the reigning champion, Freddy Loix. Freddy Loix has switched from a Ford Focus World Rally car to a Skoda Fabia Super 2000. And in these slippery and greasy conditions, maybe that's a good choice. Loix has the best start and immediately takes the lead of the rally. This is Dutchman Herman Kobus driving a Super 2000 car as well, a Ford Fiesta. And he's not that far behind Loix, only gives a couple of seconds to the Belgian. Chris Prinsen driving a Subaru Impreza has a lot more difficulties to getting the power to the ground and he loses some time in restarting his engine as well. Valuable time gets lost there. Chris Van Wunzel driving an Impreza World Rally car as well but from an older generation than Prinsen's. Van Wunzel only drives a couple of rallies this year but he wants to be here for his home rally. Vincent Verschuren, Belgian champion in class two, had a scary start to the rally. Yeah, it was the first stage in the first braking zones and the tires were too cold and I slid wide, so only 2-3 meters in, into the, um, to the ditch, but the rear gear didn't work anymore. So without reverse gear I had to wait uh, for spectators to help me and I lost some uh, 50 seconds. So it's now it's up to us to make that lost time up. David Bonjean in a Skoda Fabia as well, but a World Rally car version. And we're driving again with the man leading the rally. Fast stages there in London, but the rain has made them very slippery, so it's very tricky in all the corners. Very tricky to get the braking points right as well. Melissa de Bakere lost a lot of time with a puncture. Over five minutes got lost. In the new part of the stage on the, on the gravel, uh, we had a puncture. We tried to continue, but that was impossible. So we changed uh, on the stage to change the tire. That cost a lot more time. So we've lost uh, some five minutes there. So now you've decided to retire? Yes, um, we, we've just looked a bit and uh, it's impossible to make up five minutes. I know it's early days yet, but it's um, impossible to score a lot of points here. So we're trying to go for the, for the title and maybe it's better to cut our losses and uh, save tires and money and uh, retire. Herman Kobus was a bit confused when he continued on the stage and suddenly he found the car of Melissa de Bakker in front of him. De Bakker continuing after her puncture and obviously she must not have seen Kobus because she keeps on driving in front of him making the Dutchman lose a lot of time. So what did you tell her after the stage? Well, of course, in those moments you are full of adrenaline and um, I know I've lost a lot of time 
I think she she saw us, but um, but I'm, I was really frustrated. Yes, it wasn't really fair play what she did. No, that's right. But on the other hand, maybe she didn't see me. And um, she said she didn't. I thought she did. So that's her word against mine. Patrick Snares driving the husband car rally with a BMW, but had to retire quickly. Vroege opgave. An early retirement. You must be disappointed. Yes, of course, I'm disappointed because we worked hard this week to um, to get the car ready. And then uh, a drive shaft uh, broke at the start of the third stage. It just broke. Do we see you back in the second round in Tilt? Yes, of course. Our our aim was to um, to prepare the car here and to drive the whole championship with the BMW. And we still want to do that because uh, every round counts this year. So uh, this is um, a real setback, but we'll be back in tilt. Vincent Verschuren trying to make up for lost time. Setting good times with his VW Polo, but he will be changing to the Citroën DS3 R5 later on this year. Bob Kolsul in seventh position, just in front of Verschuren. Leading the classic Group N category. Jonas Langenaken is driving a Mitsubishi as well, but his is a Group A version of the Lancer Revolution. Calm start to the rally for Langenaken, but in sixth. And Prinsen has climbed back to fifth, despite the difficult start. It was a difficult start to the rally. Yes, very difficult. Uh, we did tests last week, but it was in dry conditions, and it's not really dry today. So um, I spun on stage one, I spun on stage two, and every time the uh, motor cut, and it was a whole procedure, a whole procedure to uh, restart the engine. We lost a lot of time there. I've tried to adapt the car in between the stages, but now I think we have to make it a lot softer because it's it's sliding all over the place. If you see, look at the inside of your car, it's all buttons and switches. You, you need higher education to to really <laughs> get this car driving. That's why it's so so difficult. It's a real challenge, of course, but it's also very difficult because there's a lot of different parameters to change to the differentials, the suspension, the heights of the car, everything. And because there is a lot of parameters, it's very difficult to get the car under control because you can, if you change everything, you um, you maybe worsen the, the uh, situation. So I'm fully confident that the uh, engineers of first, uh, who know the car really well, can get a good setup for this car. David Bonjean in fourth place with his Fabia WRC just in front of uh, Princeton's Impreza. And Chris van Wunzel still in the top three with his uh, not so young Subaru WRC S5. We had, uh, well, not such a good start to the rally. We had a very careful start to the rally. Second and third stage, uh, the confidence was better, so we improved our times. But it's always, it's very slippery, so it's uh, we have to be very, very careful. Conditions are really hard this year. Yes, of course. Uh, because of uh, the rain and, and the... Um, yeah, of course, there's a lot of cars going over the stages as well. So I think how more cars go over the stages, the slippery it will get. So it won't get better. This rally has the reputation to be an easy rally. A long straight with a small corner and then again a long straight. But this, um, this is very difficult. I've never said that this is uh, an easy rally, because this, despite the fact that it might look easy, it's you still have to stay on the road because it's very narrow roads here, and you have to fight the uh, the right braking points and not overshoot your braking points, otherwise you end up in the ditch. So it's uh, very difficult. Herman Kobus still pushing on. The lost time behind uh, Melissa de Bracke was cancelled so he's only eight seconds behind uh, Freddy Loix now Loix pushing hard in these conditions
a good start of the rally. Yeah, it was not too bad, not too bad. I was surprised myself. It was very, very slippery because of the weather conditions. A bit of rain, a lot of mud, but that helped. Your co-driver yesterday said, I hope we, it will rain tomorrow. That would be a two-hour advantage. Why is that? Well, because the, the stages are too easy when it's, when it's fast and dry. But when there's a lot of mud and slippery, it's uh, a bit more dangerous. And then uh, our car is uh, very well adapted to those conditions. The classification after three stages with Loix leading from Kobus and Van Wunzel. Off to the second loop then of the Rally van Aspengau. And for local driver Bob Colsoul, the rally is quickly over. Engine trouble spelled the end for Colsoul. Vincent Verschuren still trying to catch up some places, but then he has a very scary moment when he loses his brakes at more than 170 kilometers an hour. Suddenly you were out of bricks. What do you do then? Well, yeah, well, we were at full speed. You pushed the brake pedal and it was very spongy. There was no response. And then you try to pump on the pedal and try to pull the handbrake, but nothing happens. So you go uh, full speed to, towards the th that little hill that was there at the end of that straight. And then you try, uh, when you realize it's impossible to stop, you look for the best uh, place to push the impact. Yeah, it was a very hard impact. Yes, it was very, very hard impact. Frontal impact, 70, 80 kilometers an hour. What's the consequences for the rest of the season? Well, we will try to repair this car and to be at the start in, uh, in tilt. Otherwise, we hope that the Citroën will be as quickly as possible in, uh, in our workshop. Will you go to the tilt with uh, the, the VW? If the Citroën isn't ready yet, we'll drive to do the tilt with the VW. Jonas Langenakens loses a lot of some pressure from behind. Always driving well here, Langenakens. And that's the case this year as well. He's in sixth position for the moment. David Bonjean has lost a spot. Dropped from fourth to fifth because Prinsen is getting to grips with his Subaru on the drier conditions. Was um, third for a moment, but then lost that third position again. And is now fourth at the end of the second loop of stages. Van Wunzel retook third after losing it briefly to Prinsen. Still the top world rally car in third place overall. Kobus still in second position, losing some time to Loix. Still a very good effort for the Dutchman. You're still quite close to Loix, that's not too bad. Yeah, well, <laughs> we try our utmost best. Of course, Freddy is a, is a top driver and we try to drive in, a, in his shade uh, and to be as close as possible. A Dutchman who wants to become Belgian champion, why is that? Uh, that's a very long story. The stages here in Belgium are, are a lot better than, uh, than in uh, the Netherlands. 
de klassenverschillen in Nederland zijn. And the class differences in, in Holland are uh, a lot different. In front of the WRC is here. Is your talent more suited to the Belgian stages then? Yes, I think so. Yes, but the the car as well, because uh, the car is is very good on slippery con conditions and technical conditions, and that's what the Belgian stages are. Freddy Loix still leading, despite the fact that the roads are drying a bit. And he's still setting good times. As we look above, it gets drier. I think it's getting drier. Is that uh, a good thing for you? No, I would prefer it to rain. It can start raining very hard right now, but this, we can't change the weather conditions, so we try to do the best with the conditions that we have. The roads are getting drier, so it's a bit more difficult, but we keep on pushing. There's a change in the points for the Belgian Championship this year as well. The World Rally cars like Prince and Zan van Wunzel only score in the overall classification, but they do not get points for their class uh, wins. The Super 2000 and the R5 cars, on the other hand, get points for the overall classification and score points in their class, so they get double points. So their cars are more suited to fight for the Belgian title. Our aim is to uh, to become Belgian champion at the end of the year, so you have to drive a Super 2000 or an R5 car. So that's the reason why we drive the Scordia. We want to be champion. I don't think it's uh, possible to win all rallies because in some rallies we have to fight against World Rally cars. But on the other hand, the um, at the end of the year it will be in our favor. It's very difficult, very um, expensive to drive a World Rally car for a whole season. I think it's good for the whole championship to for drivers who want to uh, compete with a lesser car. For me it's a positive thing and for Loix as well. Loix still leading from Kobus van Winston Prinsen and Bonjean. And that was the end of part one. See you after the break. Welcome back in London for the first round of the Belgian Rally Championship. The Rally van Aspengouw was also the first round for the Yokohama Belgian Historic Rally Championship. And this is Jens Maas driving an Opel Ascona. He finished in seventh in this opening round. A good performance by Maas. Of course the slippery conditions meant that it was very difficult to get the power to the ground, especially in these rear wheel drive cars. But Robbie Moos still managed to finish in sixth with his Porsche 911. Another Porsche driver, Glenn Janssens, back after a long absence. And he celebrates his comeback with a nice third place in the Tuthill Porsche. This lovely baby blue Opel is in the hands of Toby van den Berge. And he claimed he had a lot of fun afterwards. And having a lot of fun was translated in a good result for van den Berge because he finished in second. And this man won the first round of the Yokohama Belgian Historic Rally Championship. Dirk de Veu. And he finished in ninth overall as well so a very good result for the escort driver the rally van Gasmerau of course was also the opening round for the Belgian junior championship and that was a battle between two Guillaumes this is Guillaume de Mevius younger son of the former Group N world champion but Guillaume de Mevius had some bad luck, made some errors, got some penalties, and he finished in second. 
He was beaten by this man, Guillaume Dillet, driving his C2R2 Max for this rally. But he will participate in the Peugeot Trophy later on this year. But still, he managed to take his first win in the Belgian Junior Championship. A great start to the season for the youngster. So Dillet in 10th overall, De Vue in 9th overall and the other places in the top 10 were quickly fixed. Jonas Langenakens eventually managed to finish in 5th with his Mitsubishi Lancer. Had taken a lot of time and effort to get his car ready for this season and was rewarded with 5th place. Herman Kobus lost 2nd gear in the final stages. So it was impossible for him to keep the World Rally cars behind him. And the rest 82 for two. 100 rest full, zeer lang. Into rest 142. 150. Rest 72. Rest 72, sec paal voor de huur. Ja, kom op. So Kobus fourth overall then. But still second in the Super 2000 class. Chris Prinsen eventually managed to get on the podium. He even tried to finish in second place. He just came just short of that second position. The time he lost in the opening stages was too big, so he had to settle for third. A bit of a disappointing result for the man who was the big favorite at the start of this opening round of the Belgian Rally Championship. Chris van Wunzel, on the other hand, was very happy that he could finish in second in his first rally of the year. For the moment, only four rallies are scheduled for van Wunzel, but maybe this nice result will allow him to be at the start of more rounds of the BRC. Freddy Loix has started his title campaign in the best possible way. His new cooperation with co-driver Johan Kissels as well even though it got a bit scary at the end of the rally. A very lucky escape for Loix there in one of the last stages. But that was the only problem he had all day. Eventually he managed to win the Haspengau rally with over 40 seconds. And that, of course, was celebrated in style. What a, manier om a good way to start the championship. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's very good. I'm, I'm surprised as well because um, it was a very quick um, stages, but we were lucky with the bad weather this morning. So we could make the difference there. And uh, we tried to uh, control the rally for the rest of the day and keep some 30 seconds in hand. Last year you won here with a different car, now you switch cars and you win again. That must uh, inspire confidence for you. Yes, of course, uh, for it's a, it's a good, good start for the rest of the championship. But we have to do the other rallies and it won't be as easy as here. But it's a good boost, yes. Johan, this is, was your first rally with Freddy. You had a lot of pressure, but you managed to win. Yes, I had some pressure on me, but um, I think we managed well. The result is there. The result is there. Indeed, Loix wins it from Van Wunsel, Prinsen, Kobus and Langenakens. And the champagne on the podium. A good win for Loix and Kitzels. And a good win for Team BMA as well from Bernard Munster, who managed the Fabia Super 2000. Loix leading the championship, of course, from Kobus and then the guys who got a lot of points with their class wins, the Marschall, Schmelker and Dile. And that Guillaume Dillet was awarded the BRC award as well for the um, a very good performance he showed in this opening round and he gets a um, free entry in the next round. I'm very happy with this. Um, I was very happy I could drive again with the Citroën again. Last year you won the um, Class M championship. This year you do the Junior with, with the Citroën. When will you switch to the Peugeot? 
Well, the aim is to um, start uh, the Peugeot Trophy with the Peugeot, who's still under construction. But from the next round on, I should drive uh, with the Peugeot. And the conditions today, that was very difficult, but you seem to like it. Yes, I like it a lot. I, I know the Citroën C2 very well, and uh, I have it very good under control when the conditions are slippery. And this uh, free entry for the next round, is that important for a young driver like you? Yes, of course, it's, uh, it's not cheap, an entry to a rally, so I'm happy uh, to be in Tilt uh, for free now. And that was the end of the opening round of the Belgian Rally Championship. We hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.